when we work with data, for example, using the pandas package here in Python, we very often want to extract data or certain data sets from a table. And this is what I would like to show here how this can be done. So selecting data using locations and indices. Now, first of all, I need to import pandas as pd. I run it so the package is loaded. And then I have some files here and I want to load this banda arg, which is a data file from georock. So I do this in a new cell and I assign this to the variable df for data frame. And um, I use the pandas uh, command from the pandas package, then read, and this is a CSV file, so I need to read CSV, round brackets, then the name, including the path. So the path is drive and then my drive. And here in the data folder, I have Panda arc.csv and let's see it. So I put df here and here I have the data file. It's a comparatively small one, 470 rows at 127 columns, but I don't want it displayed because it's too large to have sensible look at it. So I just read it in and that's it. All right. And then I'm going to start and trying to extract some of the elements here. Um, or in fact, let me just display it a little bit. So I have here citations, tectonic settings as categories and so on. And maybe I'm just interested in first to know what the categories are because these are the ones I'm using to extract it data from a certain category. So if I want to do this, I can use the columns command. And if I run it, I will only get the category names. And here are some dots because uh, it's um, not showing all of them because they are so long. So if I want to show all, I can use the to list command. And now I will see all the all the names of the of the categories I have here. Okay, but now let's start. Let's have it here for a second and start extracting. So extracting works with as usual with the list. I have the variable name of the list or the data frame in this case, and then square brackets. And I can start well getting just a, a, a category here. So I could use citations. I think it's all in um, upper cases. Is it? No, it's in lower cases. Um, so citations, citations, and then I should get just the citations columns. Now I want to use another command, which is quite powerful. And this command is called iloc. iloc is index and the lock is location or integer. And after iloc, I use again the square brackets. And now if I put in one, I will get the first data set. And it looks a little bit different because now the categories are here and the values are on the right side. But I get one data set with this small command here. Now maybe, I want to have more than one data set. Then I can put in a list here and can have one and maybe I want data set four and data set seven and data set should be commas in between seven and nine. So I want these four data sets. Now I get only these four data sets. So that's already very convenient. Now maybe I just want a certain interval. So say data sets four to 20. This is also something I can do. This is no longer a list, but an interval. And this is done with a column 4 to 20. And now I get the data sets 4 to 20. Maybe let's think just fewer. So it looks a little bit more clear. So I get 4 to 6. And again, as so often, um, it, it's on display 4 to 5 in this case because sometimes the last one here is excluded. So if I would like to have 4 to 6, I would in fact need to put in four to seven here and then I get four, five, six. It's just something to remember here. Um, maybe I want to get all the data sets from one to six. Then I just omit the first one where I could also put in zero, of course. I may get the one four to um, six. So I get now seven data sets. This is why the seven is here. And I only get it up to six. Or I can just leave out a zero and I will get the same result. And the same works the other way around. So maybe I put in here uh, 200. I forgot how many these were. And then I get 
everything from 200 to 469. So this is um, quite powerful and quite neat. Now maybe I don't want to get all the data sets, but maybe just the what is for example here. Uh, I just want to have MgO, just all the magnesium oxide values. Then what I can do is um, let me just put in a smaller interval here again, three to nine, then a comma. Or I could just first of all I could just take the fifth column. So I put in five here. Then I get data sets three to nine and the fifth column. So I only get the values from the fifth column here. It's a bit clearer if I make again a list here and I have not only the fifth column but maybe the seventh and the fifteenth column or say thirty-fifth column. That's what I have here now. That's the three to nine data sets and from this I only have the fifth column, the seventh column and the thirty-fifth column which in this, this case is calcium. So that's also quite neat. But maybe I don't know the, um, the number of the columns, but only the name, like calcium in this case. I can also put in here calcium. And um, it's slightly misspelled. So what I would, what I'm usually doing here is then, um, let's have another code here, another cell. So df columns uh, to list to list so I can check the names um, but it's actually there should be the element name so there should also be a calcium I guess oh it's calcium dot one this is because likely because there's maybe two columns called calcium but there is calcium so this should work so let's have a look again um, oh, yeah, now that's all fine. For this I need a different command. I come to this in a second. So this is only for actually really using integers as I'm doing just here. And again, I said I couldn't put in here a list as well. I just did this. So for the names, I need a different command. And this is not called iLock because here I can only use numbers, but lock for locations. So I can still use um, an interval here but if I put now a number here this won't work because now I can use names for example calcium and I can I can make a list here if I want so if I want to have calcium and magnesium and um, silicon I'm now getting three the data sets three to nine with um, these columns here so this is really very helpful and very nice to get specific data sets out of here. And of course, again, I can put in here a list with only maybe two and five. So I get only two and five and only these um, these columns here. So if I want just maybe from the fifth, fourth data set, only the silicon value, that's something I can get something like here. I now have only the silicon. This is in PPM. That's why it's a large number. That's how I can extract it. Now maybe I, um, yeah. So this is this is one way. Now maybe I want to know um, from the there's something called I think rock type at the very beginning. I'm just checking yeah, here. There's rock type. So maybe I want to know what kind of rock types there are. So I can just extract the rock type column. So this is the rock type column. So there are many different rocks and many of them have the same names. So I can just make a drop duplicate here. And now I get all the names of these um, rock types in here. Now if you want to only display, there are various ways now, but if I for example want to display only the mantle xenoliths and extract data from only the mantle xenoliths, um, what I can do, there's one of two options, another one I will show later, is I reset the index. So the, the index was just this 
So this is the index here. These are the numbers in this first column that Pandas automatically adds. Now I can change this index. I can use df and then say set index and then the index shall now be rock type. Rock type. And I do this in place. It's just an additional command. So this is automatically um, assigned to the F in this moment. So if I run this, I will now see that now the index is the first column here. Now with this, what I what I can do with location, I have location and I'm saying location shall be monthly xenolith. Xenoliths. Xenol Xenolith. And so I'm, I'm not, I don't need to put in again numbers here for the which data sets I want. And then I want the mental xenolith. And from this, magnesium and silicon. Uh, did I write this wrong? I think it's called mantle xenolith. Let's check. I should check in here volcanic rock. Oh, it's all in capitals. It's all in capitals. Mantle xenolith, xenolith. And now I have all the mantle xenolith and magnesium and silicon value. So this is very neat. By this I can really on a very high granular level extract certain data or data sets. And if I want to reset the index, so that's again as before, what I can use is a DF and then um, reset index and just in place true. And then the index is as before. So this is how we can work with pandas and very powerfully extract exactly the data I want to then visualize, manipulate and so on.